Hello and welcome to the Unified Messaging video as part of the Exchange Technical Video Series. I'm Ann Vu and I'm here with my teammate Adam Glick. Hi Ann. So Adam, what are we going to be discussing today? We're going to talk about Unified Messaging, what Exchange Unified Messaging means. So give people a sense of what is Exchange Unified Messaging, how it matters to them, what it does in terms of taking the voice information that you have, bringing it into an exchange. We'll take a look at where that shows up, so where people will get those experiences from, what new options people have to give the people that call in access to those things, so it's not just the person who's setting up their voicemail, but actually the people who call their voicemail. What extra options do they get? And what extra abilities do people get to interact with their voice and indeed their email and exchange information with their voice? And then we'll finally cover off on what it means from a compliance standpoint. What about government and industry regulations? And how do we help people meet those needs and concerns using Exchange Server to do their unified messaging work? We'll then sum it up and have a quick additional resources. If people want to learn some more information, there'll be a slide with some extra links for that. OK, that's great. So I hear the term unified messaging used a lot. So mm -hmm. what does it actually encompass? So when we think about unified messaging, we think about several different areas. Mm -hmm. So one of them is just decreasing costs for IT infrastructure. When IT folks look at their legacy PBX infrastructure, they probably have a PBX there. They may or may not have parts. They may or may not have a separate support contract that they're having to do through extended support because the system they have may be 10 years old. Possibly they replaced it last time. was probably around Y2K. Mm -hmm. So they have legacy infrastructure they have to maintain, and that's legacy storage that they've got to deal with. That's the support that we talked about. It's a different IT pro skill set. So they've got to stay up to date on this old infrastructure that might not be getting updates. They might be forced to kind of know two different things. And it's about getting rid of all that and bring it into something that's very familiar, that's well supported. So you've got one storage infrastructure with Exchange. You've got one set of knowledge. You've got you know, IT certifications for Exchange. It's a well supported product. It's an industry leader. And so people know they can feel safe putting their information there, as well as reducing their costs. Because instead of maintaining all, that extra thing, all those extra things, it's just included in the stuff that they do with Microsoft Exchange. Okay. It also gives them the ability to have some of the familiar experiences they have, like a message waiting indicator on a phone or voicemail that they call up and listen to, but also extending those experiences about where people can get those experiences besides just calling into a voicemail system to hear their voicemail. And so users get a better set of experiences as their voicemail becomes an integrated part of their inbox experience as well as something that's left on a phone. So rather than having separate silos, we build a bridge across those and give people a unified experience so they can get their information where they want, when they want, and in the way that they want it. And then finally, we really want to optimize those things for the end users and the IT department so that both those cost savings and those user productivity pieces come together to create a great experience and great value for everyone that uses the system. That sounds great. So why don't you show me what we have? Sure. Let's take a look. OK. So here we've got Bob Kelly's mailbox. So as you can see, it's a regular Outlook mailbox. And he's got lots of messages in that mailbox, including voicemail messages, like what we're looking at here. Mm -hmm. But if he's got a lot of messages, maybe he just wants to click on, say, a search folder here for voicemail. And he can narrow it down to just the voicemail messages. And if you've got a lot of voicemail messages, you can go directly to the message that you want. So in this case, if you want to hear the second message, or even the second message from Ben Miller, because he could do a search or a filter further from here, mm -hmm. he can go right to that. He doesn't have to call in a system, and then hit forward or listen through a message. You can skip right to the information that's important to you. So if we look at Ben Miller's message here, you can see a couple of things. One of the things you're going to notice is that there's a voicemail preview here. So the machine has listened to the voicemail that someone has left, and it actually goes in and transcribes that, puts it out in the message so that you can read what the message that someone left is. So here, I may not even have to call Ben back to see what the message was or call in, leave a meeting to go see what it is. I can literally just read it in my email. Oh, He's calling who wants to go over the sales figures. And it's smart about this information. It takes a look at the information and says, what of this information do I know things about? So for instance, the phone number here, if we see, is actually set up so that if I wanted to, I could go use something like Microsoft Link and actually call that call number back. directly from it. I wouldn't have to write it down or copy and paste it somewhere else, that it's integrated with your voice and telephony system in order to have that full experience. That's very cool. So not only that, but if it's a long message, like some people get sales calls or you know the quarterly figures, and they've got a 10, 15 minute message, and there's some part of it maybe wasn't clear. Maybe the transcription didn't get it exactly right. You can actually click on that particular area. So I were to say, click here. I wanted to see the number. Yeah. Make number sure I get the number. Four two five seven zero seven five five. And they go straight to it. Yes. 
so you can jump straight to the part that you want to hear rather than going to listen to the whole message, okay, can I speed forward? It allows you to be much more productive and get to the information that really matters to you as quickly and as easily as possible. And that's great. So you don't even have to listen to it. So if you're in a meeting, you can just read you it and not it. disrupt exactly. other people. That's great. So, but what if I'm away from my main laptop or desktop computer? How do I access this information still? That's a great question because many times when people are at their desk, they can see the flashing light on their phone. That's the simple voicemail experience they've always been used to. The question is, when you're away from your desk, how do you know someone left you a voicemail? Yeah. So let me show you what this looks like. One of the great values of unified messaging is if I go and take a look at Outlook Web App. Mm -hmm. So here we are in Outlook Web App that I can access from any of the major web browsers. Yep. And I go in, you can see that I get the same experience here, that I can still see the voicemail preview, and I still have the inline player that I can play it, and I can listen to that message even if I'm not at my desk, at my regular Outlook. I can dial into that. I can always call in and get it if I want, but yeah. I can also go in through the web and see it. That's great. Indeed, I can even go further than that. If you're syncing your mobile phone using Exchange Active Sync, you can also get an experience. Let me show you what that looks like. So here we've got a mobile device. I have my Windows phone. And if you take a look, I'm projecting on the screen. Uh, we'll go into Outlook. And you see if I go into that message from Ben Miller, once again, I have the message listed there. I can look at it. I can see the voicemail preview. I get all the same information. So whether I'm on the go, whether I'm at a web browser, at someone else's computer, at my Outlook, or indeed at a phone, I can always get my voicemail wherever I want, when I want, the way that I want. And you can just press the number and call that person right back? Sure. If I tap that number right now, it's going to bring up the phone dialer, and we'll go and make a phone call. I can call or text them. Cool. So let's move on, shall we? OK. So the second scenario I wanted to talk a little bit about was about giving callers choice. OK. So I'm about to go on vacation. Uh, do I have to access my voicemail and go through the prompts and set things up on the phone like I used to do with our legacy systems? No. You don't. You can still set it up that way if you like, but we actually give you a nicer interface to do it through your computer and a website. Let me show you what that looks like. Okay. So you go into the Outlook web app and choose options. See all options. We're going to make decisions about the phone here. In voicemail, we'll just create a new rule. And for our new rule, we'll say if automatic replies are turned on. So just as we have an out of office message when we're out of the office, we're going to say when those automatic replies are showing up, we want you to play a special green. We want to do something special in that. Okay. In that case, I want you to be able to transfer a call, in this case, to my boss. So for Ben Miller, who's my boss, press 1. And we're going to tell it to go find Ben Miller, of course, because it's tied into our unified messaging system. It knows who Ben Miller is and knows what his extension is. You don't need to fill in any of that information. Yep. You just fill it in by name. And we can click Apply to that. Now it'll be sent straight to them. So if we call this out of office as a name, and we can save this. So right now, if someone were to access this particular message, they'd get kind of prompted by the computer automated system. But if we want to go and we want to make that more personal, we can go and we can record something. So let's go and record it so it's a more personalized greeting. It's my voice rather than a computer talking. That's right. So we'll choose call on phone. Okay. And I'm going to have it just call my phone number, but I could just as easily, if I wanted to, say if I was setting this and I was outside of the office already, call I could have it call else. my cell phone. I could have it call the phone that's in my hotel room, whatever I want. You can pick the phone number you want. OK. So it calls my phone. You have not recorded a greeting for this call answering rule. Callers will hear you have reached the mailbox of Bob Kelly for Ben Miller. Press 1 to be transferred to Miller. To leave a voice message, press the pound key. To replay, press 1. To record a new greeting, press 2. To when recording a greeting for this call answering rule, it should also include the list of actions callers can select. For example, you could say, press 1 to find me, or press the pound key to leave a voice message. Please record your greeting after the tone. When you've finished recording, press the pound key. Hi, you've reached Bob. If you need to get a hold of someone right away, you can reach Ben by pressing 1. Have a great day. Hi, you've reached Bob. If you need to get a hold of someone right away, you can reach Ben by pressing 1. Have a great day. To accept, press 1. To re-record, recording accepted. And it's just that easy. That sounds great. So let's see what that sounds like when people call into the system. OK, let's do that. So we'll give a call. And we'll hear what it sounds like once the voicemail picks up. OK. Hi, you've reached Bob. I'm out of the office today. If it's urgent, 
you can get a hold of Ben by pressing 1. If not, leave a message after the tone. Have a great day. And so I can choose to push one, and I'd transfer me to Ben Miller's phone. And I can set up a tree like that. I could have you know, one through nine, so I could set up different people that people want to get a hold of. You could have your own kind of per personal answering tree, as complex or as simple as end users want to make it. That's really great. So this is really just good functionality in general. So what if instead of uh, the call tree going to different people, what if it's a certain scenario and I want it to actually find me wherever I am, whether I'm on vacation or on a business trip? How does that work? So one of the great features of Exchange Unified Messaging is because it's integrated with your phone system, not only can you have people do the traditional voicemail options, but you can also do things like have it call out to you. So what I'm going to go do here is, let's say that since Ben Miller is my boss, mm -hmm. if he calls, I don't want it to tell him, transfer the call to Ben Miller. He's not going to transfer a call to himself. That doesn't make sense. So what if I make a new rule? So we can say, for urgent matters, because I only want him to call me if it's urgent, press 1, and I can have it call my cell phone. And so by putting in my cell phone number, I don't have to give out my cell phone number to anyone who might be calling in, say someone I didn't want to have that phone number. But the system, since it's tied in with the phone system, will be able to actually place that call out and connect the two without having to actually give out my phone number or leave it on my voicemail. And well, someone, no, no one has to actually write down that number either. Correct. And this only applies to Ben. So if Ben calls and it shows that it's coming from him, then he gets this special menu that now allows him to get a hold of me. But if I, say, have an external sales call that comes into my phone, they just get my regular voicemail. Yeah. So I can actually set up different rules for different groups of people. It's That's really, really powerful. Cool. That's really cool. So that's really great that we can put uh, all of this information in our inboxes. But what if we don't want to be in our inboxes? So one of the great things about unified messaging is it allows you to communicate with who you want, where you want, in the way that you want. So everything's available within your inbox. But because you've brought voice into that collection of technology, you can then use voice to get the information that's already there. Mm -hmm. So let me show you a technology we have called Outlook Voice Access, which allows you to access your inbox, your calendar, your contacts, all of your exchange information from the telephone interface. That's really cool. So I'm going to go call in to my mailbox. Bob Kelly. Please enter your PIN, then press you have no new voice messages and one new email message. Email. You currently have a m opening your mailbox. First, an unread message from Ben Miller titled Sales Arrived today at 10.54 a.m. Hey, Bob. Our sales numbers are back and Q looks great. See you at the meeting. Ben. End of message. You can say play next. Delete message, reply, reply all, mark it. So if you take a look here in our inbox, you can see that it just read me the one unread message I have at the top of my inbox. And I could go through my whole inbox if I want to work through it that way. So just as you can access your email in your Outlook, you can also call in and have it read you your email. But it'll go beyond that. Say if we take a look and let's see what the calendar looks like. You have no new voice calendar for today. And opening today's calendar, you have a meeting from 1.30 to 4 o'clock in conference room C, titled Sales Forecast Meeting. You can say next day. Main menu. Main. Sure. Returning to the main menu. Goodbye. Please say, I heard you say goodbye. Do you want to end this phone call? Yes. Thank you for calling. Goodbye. So as you can see, you can interact with your calendar. You can even go deeper than that. If you wanted to tell all the people that responded to the meeting you're going to be 10 minutes late, or you needed to cancel a meeting, or clear your whole calendar for today, it understands all of those things. If you want to go to a particular day and hear the calendar information, you want to listen to all the unread messages in your mailbox, it's going to give you access to all of those things. So you now have a voice interface to your inbox information the same way that you have an inbox and text view to all of your voice information. It's integrating the two. It's not just trying to layer things. That's really awesome. So what if a customer is in a regulated industry and they want to apply some policies to their voicemails? Can we do that in Exchange? Of course. So one of the things that Exchange provides to our customers is the ability to handle regulated environments and to provide compliance rules and ways that they can set up to meet their legal and regulatory needs. 
So when we think about voicemail, it's just another one of these forms of messaging that we've integrated, and it's tied in with a lot of the same features. Okay. So voicemails show up in people's inboxes, but they show up differently. They're marked differently, and they're actually identified in the system differently. There's a different type that we, we classify them as. And because it's a different type, you can set different things, like a retention policy on voicemail that may be a much shorter period, say 30 days, versus maybe you have to retain your email for five years, seven years, maybe indefinitely. Mm -hmm. And so you can actually choose to hold on to messages for different periods of time and different types of messages, depending on what your own legal department has decided is most important for your organization or for what your industry requires. Okay. So you can set different rules on that. One of the other things you can do is also apply IRM protections. So the ability to not only when you send a message to someone does it show up in their inbox, but then you can decide, well, when it shows up in an inbox, there's an attachment. And I don't want them to be able to download that attachment. So maybe the attachment doesn't show up. We can only stream the message. Mm -hmm. We can give, give them the ability to do that. We can also give them the ability to say, don't allow them to forward this message. So they can have the message, they can hear it, but it might expire after a certain amount of time or it might only be able to be listened to by that person. And so if they forward the email to someone else, they can't forward it. The forward button doesn't work. It's not able to be sent anywhere else. So you have control over the message. And you can either choose at the administrative level to apply that to all voicemails, or you can give callers the option to choose which ones they want to protect and which ones they don't. I'll show you how to do it. It's really easy. OK, let's take a look. So we're going to give Ben Miller, Bob's boss, a call. And we're going to leave them a message with some information that we probably don't want everyone to have access to. So we're going to try and protect that information through the voicemail interface. I'll show you how that's done. OK. Hi, you've reached Ben Miller. I'm not available to take your call right now. Leave a message, and I'll call you back. Take care. After the tone, please record your message. When you finish recording, hang up or press the pound key for more options. Hey, Ben, this is Bob. Looks like our projections for this quarter are going to come in about a third lower than what our sales are going to be. So we should talk to the guys in finance, because we could really blow it out this quarter. Give me a call as soon as you get this. Bye. To accept it, to send now, press the pound key. To mark as high importance, press 1. To mark as private, press 2. Which marked as private and normal importance. To send, message sent. Goodbye. And that message is sent when he gets it in his inbox. It'll be IRM protected, so he won't be able to forward it or download the attachment and send to someone else. But he'll be able to hear it himself, and he'll be able to read that information. That's really great. So customers who want to be able to set or apply policies can do so very easily. Absolutely. And that means people even calling in from external can be able to protect a message. Say if you're dealing with an outside accounting firm or someone that you have a private confidential relationship, say outside legal counsel, that you or, want to be able to protect information with. Or a merger and acquisition. Absolutely. So we've had a chance to talk a little bit about what Exchange Unified Messaging really means to people. The better experiences that people are going to get getting their information everywhere, the ability for organizations to save costs with what they're doing, for users to be able to set up phone trees, answering out-of-office messages through the OWA interface as well as through a phone if they would like to, and also the ability to go in and protect that information for regulated organizations. And all that's part of Exchange Unified Messaging. That's great. How do we find out more information about that? So if you want more information, the slide you're seeing behind me has a bunch of links that you can go to. You can look at that information. Going to the Exchange website is also a great place to find out more about Unified Messaging and finding how bringing voice into your Exchange environment is a great way to unify your communications. Thank you, Adam. And thanks to all of you for tuning in to the Exchange Unified Messaging video as part of our Exchange Technical Video Series. For more information, please check out some of the resources that Adam had mentioned, as well as check out some of our other Exchange Technical videos, like our archiving and mobility videos. Thanks for watching.